Welcome back everyone. Houston Math Prep here. We want to do some example problems with sets and set operations. I've defined my universal set for these set operations using the set builder notation. So my universal set is all of the objects where my objects are a positive integer less than 10. Positive integer accounting number less than 10. So that would be 1 through 9, all the counting numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Those are all of the objects we're considering. We don't want to consider anything else when we're looking at our problems. That's what the universal set tells us. I've got a few sets here, A, B, and C, and we want to answer these questions below. So is the set 1, 8 a subset of A? We look for 1 and 8 in A, and if they are in A, then we say yes, it's a subset. So 1 is in A, and 8 is also in A. So we can say that yes, 1, 8 is a subset of A. Is 1, 8 a subset of B? Well, I look here and I have 2, 4, 6, 8 in B. 8 is in B, but 1 is not in B anywhere. So since we're missing one of the elements in B, we say no, it is not a subset of B. Is 1, 8 a subset of C? I think you can see in this case the 1 is present in C, but the 8 is missing from C. So since we're missing one of the elements in C, then we say that no, 1, 8 is not a subset of C. Is A a subset of C? So here we look at A, we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 8. Are all of those inside of C as well? 1 is in C, 3 is in C, 5 is in C, but then we look at 7 and 8 are not in C. So since we have that not all of the things in A are in C, we will say no. And I haven't written the empty set here, but remember that we consider the empty set to be a subset of any set. So when I say empty set is a subset of something else, question mark, the answer will always be yes. The empty set is a subset of C because there is nothing in the empty set that we don't have in set C. Let's look at some intersections and unions. So we'll work down our intersection list. Here this can be thought of an and symbol in a way. So we have A and C. I want all of the things that are in A and C. This is A intersect C. So all of the things that are in A and C, one is in both of them. So we start our curly brackets. We say one is there, three is there, and five is there as well. So one, three, and five are all of the elements that are in both. You notice 7 and 8 are in here but not in here. 2 and 4 are in C but not in A. We need them to be in both. So we have here B intersect C, B and C. Think of it that way. What is in B and also in C in both? So if we start a list here with our braces, we'll have 2 is in B and C, 4 is in B and C, but 6 and 8 are not. So we'll just have 2 and 4 here for B intersect C. A intersect B, so we want elements in A and also in B. If we look at that, we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 8. B, we have 2, 4, 6, 8. So I have odd numbers and then an 8. Here I have even numbers and then an 8. The only thing that they share here is just the number 8. So we just have one element in that intersection, A intersect B. Here these are unions. You can think of this as or, but remember it can also be in both. So in A or in C, or both. So things that are in A and things that are in C, we want to include them all. So we look at them and we make a list of anything that we see. Well, C has one through five, so let's go ahead and write those down so we can keep them in order. So one, two, three, four, five. And then what else do we have in A? Well, we also have seven and eight beyond those. So those are all of the elements that exist somewhere in A or in C or in both. Looking at the next one, B union C, so I want to write down anything I see on either list of B or C. So we go ahead and write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because we have all of those in C and then look back at B and see anything else we didn't write down. We didn't write down 6 and 8, so we'll need a 6 and we'll need an 8 here. Those are all the elements that appear in the B list or they appear in the C list or they appear in both. For A union B, A or B, or both, we have 1, 3, 5, 7, 8, and 2, 4, 6, 8. So let's start our list. So I'm going to get odds from here and evens from here mostly, right? So I get 1 from A, I get 2 from B, 3 from A, 4 from B, 5 from A, 6 from B, I get 7 from A, and I actually get 8 from both of them. And that's the end of my set there, so 1 through 8 for our A union B.
looking here at some complements, we have A complements. So remember, that's all of the things in the universal set that are not in A. So remember, the universal set is 1 through 9, counting numbers. So we want all of these counting numbers 1 through 9 that are not in A. Well, 2 is not in A, 4 is not in A, 6 is not in A, and the only thing 1 through 9 besides those would be 9. So 2, 4, 6, and 9 are the elements that are in the universal set, but they are not in set A. B complement, all of the things that are not in B. Well, it looks like my odd numbers are not in B, right? I have 2, 4, 6, 8 in B, so 1 and 3 and 5 and 7, and remember we're considering up to 9 from my universal set. So those are all of the elements that are not in B. That's B complement. For C complement, all the things not in C that are in the universal set, we have 1 through 5. So in C complement, we will have the things missing in C, which are just 6 through 9, 6, 7, 8, and 9. Let's look at these here. We have complements involving unions and intersections. So first thing, let's maybe figure out what is in the parentheses. We'll do that first, and then we'll look at our complement. So let's first think about what is A union C. So A union C. I'm going to write it down small here, and then we'll answer the question. That's all of the things that are in A, or they're in C, or they're in both. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 from C. And then we also have 7 and 8 from A. We did this a bit earlier. And so now we want the complement of this. We want all of the things that are not in this that are in the universal set. Well, if I look at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, the only things in the universal set that are not there would be the numbers 6 and 9. So that is our A union C complement. A intersection C complement, that'll be a bit different. We need the elements first in parentheses that are in A and they are also in C, so they are in both. So let's figure that out first. So A intersection C, all of the things that are in both are the units one, three, and five. And now we want the complement of that. So all of the things in the universal set that are not in A intersect C, so that would be two, four, six, 7, 8, and 9. Here we're going to find A complement and B complement separately and then take the intersection of them. Now handily we already have A complement and B complement written here so we're just going to look at the list that we already figured out here and then we'll figure this out. So A complement is this 2, 4, 6, 9 and B complement is the 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. We want the intersection, remember this is all of the elements in both lists. The only thing that's in both lists is the element 9. So our A complement intersect B complement is just 9. Let's do a little bit more practice with some of the parentheses here. So I have A union B. I do that first, and then I will take that intersect C. So let's do the parentheses first. Let's do A union B. So all of the things that are in A or they're in B or they're in both. Well, we have 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6, 7, and 8. Those are all of the things that appear in at least one of the lists A and B. Now I will take that and intersect it with C. So I'm looking for all of the things that are in 1 through 8 that are also and they are in the C list. So all of the things that are in this list that are also in C, it turns out actually that's just the entire set C, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 are in both of these lists. So our A union B intersect C is going to be the set with just the numbers 1 through 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Here we've switched it around just a little bit. We have A intersect C or B. Let's look at A and C first. A intersect C. So we want any elements that are in the A and the C lists. Well, if we look at that, then that is 1, 3, and 5. Once we've done the part in parentheses, we will take that union B. If it appears in either list, then we want it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
and 8. Okay, so when you see something like this, just make sure that you do what's in the parentheses first, and then whatever you get from that, go ahead and do the next operation with the other set. Let's look at just a couple more examples. I have some new sets here. So my universal set is any element x such that x is a student at your school. So this is the set of all students at your school. So when we read set E, we don't want to read this as all people taking economics. We only are considering from the universal set. So E is really going to be the set of all people at your school, all students at your school that are taking economics. M will be all the students at your school that are taking math, and then P will be all of the students at your school taking physics. So here we have P complement, and we want to describe P complement. Well, P is the set of all students at your school taking physics. So P complement would be all of the things in the universal set that are not in set P. So P complement is going to be all students at your school who are not taking physics. Okay, let's look at this next one. I have E intersect M. These are students at your school taking economics. These are students at your school taking math. And the intersection says they need to be in both lists. So this will be the set of all students at your school. And they need to be taking both if it is the intersection. So we'll say taking both economics and math. Okay, our final two things to describe here, we have M union P. So remember union means either in this one or in this one or we're in both. So that will be the set of all students at your school taking either, they're going to be taking either math or they're taking physics or they could be taking both, right? Okay, and that's what union means. Here we have complements, separate complements, and then an intersection. So this will say and between these two things. So not in E and not in P. Those are the objects we want. So these are all students at your school and they need to be taking neither one, right? So all students at your school taking neither economics nor are they taking physics. Okay, hopefully this gives you some good practice with sets and set operations. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a future video.